Hey guys, this is Evan from Easy Origami, and today I'll be teaching you how to fold an origami Penrose triangle designed by Alessandro Beber. This is an awesome optical illusion, and it's very easy to fold. This model requires three rectangular sheets of paper. Each unit is folded from a rectangle with a dimension ratio of 1 by 2, so in order to cut a rectangle of that size, I recommend starting with a 6 inch square sheet of paper and cutting it in half horizontally. That will make two separate 3 by 6 rectangles, and using them to fold the units will result in a model about 6.5 inches wide. It's also really important to consider the color of your paper in order to get this illusion right. Ideally you will choose three different colors, and you'll find duo paper that has three different combinations of these colors where none of the colors repeat on the same side. So what I mean by that is if the three colors that you choose are black, brown, and white, you will need a sheet of paper that is black and brown, a sheet of paper that is brown and white, and a sheet of paper that is white and black. So you can see that these are three unique color combinations where none of the colors repeat on the same side. And if you can't find paper like this, you can easily prepare some by gluing two sheets of paper together or simply painting your own. Or if you just want to try this out with three different colors of standard origami paper, your model will look something like this. And once you've prepared your paper, then we're going to start with our first rectangle with either side facing up. And then we're going to fold in half horizontally. So take this bottom edge and fold it up to the top edge. Align the corners and the edges, then make your crease, and then you can unfold. And then we're going to fold up this bottom edge and align it with the crease that we just made. So we're simply going to pull up the bottom edge like this, and once it's completely aligned with that horizontal crease, then you can make your crease. Then you can turn the paper over, and then we're going to do the same thing. So once again, fold up this bottom edge and align it with the existing horizontal crease. So we're just going to pull up the bottom edge like this, and once it's completely aligned with that crease, then you can make your crease. And then you can unfold. Then we're going to slightly rotate the model so that the creases we just made are now held vertically. And so this layer that we folded behind is now held on the left side. Then from here we're going to focus on the bottom portion of the model. And now we're going to make a small crease at a 60 degree angle only in this center rectangle. So we're going to do that by pivoting around this point that I've marked here, which is basically where the leftmost horizontal crease intersects with this bottom edge. So what we want to do is lift up this bottom right corner, and we want to pull it over to the left. And once your paper reaches that point that I mentioned before, then you simply want to make a small pinch mark along the bottom edge, just so that we can pivot our crease from there. Then you want to continue pulling the corner over to the left, just like this, until the colored corner aligns with this left edge. So at this point your paper should be aligned at these two places. Then from here you'll see that the paper does not lie flat. So what we want to do is make a small crease along this right edge, and we want to stop our crease at this point, which is where it intersects with this existing crease here. And now we want to valley fold along that same crease. So we're simply going to fold this colored flap in half, just like this. And at the same time, you want to push over the right side of the model by simply reinforcing that existing vertical crease. Then you can continue all the way down to the bottom of the model, simply flattening out the paper as you go. And you'll see that the paper will flatten out, and it should come to a point at the bottom of the model here. And now we're going to make an angle bisector by folding up this bottom left corner and aligning it with the corner of the flap that we just reverse folded. So we're simply going to lift up the bottom left corner, and we're going to pull it up until both of those corners are aligned. Then you can make a sharp crease through all layers, and then you can unfold. And now we're going to fold this small white triangle over to the right along this vertical colored edge here. So we're simply going to pull that white triangle over to the right. You'll see it should align with this right edge as well. Then you can make a sharp crease through all layers, and then you can unfold. And now we're going to turn the paper over so that the corner with the diagonal edge is now held on the top right. And then we want to focus on the bottom portion of the model here. And now we're going to make a diagonal crease similar to the way we did before. Except this time we want our crease to pivot from this bottom left corner, and we want the bottom right corner to align with this vertical edge in the middle. So we're going to start by pulling this bottom right corner over to the left. And again, since we want our crease to pivot from this bottom left corner, I suggest making a small pinch mark just to hold the layers in place. Then we simply want to align the bottom right corner with the white edge in the middle, and once you have that, then your paper should be aligned in these two places. Then you can make a sharp crease through all layers, and then you can unfold. And once you have that, then you can slightly rotate the model, and this is one completed unit. Now you must fold two more. And if you have the paper to do the three color scheme correctly, then you want to find a rectangle that shares a color with the bottom half of your first unit here. So in my case, that color is brown. So for the second unit, we want to start with the brown side facing down. And then the rest of the folding sequence is exactly the same. So 
So here are the first two units. And for the last unit, we want to take our final rectangle, which shares a color with the bottom half of the second unit here. So in my case, it's black. And we want to start with the black side facing down. So you'll notice that we started with a different color facing down each time. So from here, the folding sequence is exactly the same. And this is what you should have once you fold it all three units. Then from here, we're going to take the first two, which share this brown color here, and we're going to lift them up like this. So we want to rotate the first unit so that the reverse folded corner is held on the top right, and we want to hold the second unit so that the reverse folded corner is held on the bottom left. And on the first unit, you'll notice that there's a pocket inside that reverse folded corner. And on the second unit, we're going to use this top layer of paper as our flap. So now we're going to lift up both units, and we carefully want to bring them together while inserting the second unit's flap inside of the first unit's pocket. So you want to make sure that only the top layer of paper goes inside of that pocket, and then you want to continue pushing both units together until they're completely aligned. And now you can see that the two brown flaps are aligned at the top, and they also align at the bottom of this vertical edge as well. Once you have that, then you can turn the model over, and then we're going to focus on the top portion of the model here. So to lock the two units together, we're going to start by mountain folding along this existing crease, so we're simply going to mount and fold the top layer of paper behind, just like this. Then you'll notice that we have this small white triangle here, and we just want to valley fold that inside of the same pocket by folding it in along an existing crease. So just tuck it inside of that pocket, just like this. And then we also want to fold down this top triangle along an existing crease as well. So just flatten that out. And once you have that, then you can turn the model over, and we're going to slightly rotate it like this. And now you've connected the first two units. So from here, we're going to take our third unit, and we want to hold it with the reverse folded corner on the bottom left. Then we want to lift up all three units, and we carefully want to bring the second and third units together, again making sure that the third unit's flap goes inside of the second unit's pocket, just like we did before. You want to make sure that only the top layer of paper from the third unit goes inside of the second unit's pocket. Then you want to continue adjusting the units until they look something like this. And as you can see, these two black flaps align at the top of the model here, and they also align at the bottom of this vertical edge as well. And once those units are aligned, then we're carefully going to turn the model over, and we're going to focus on this top section here. So again, we're going to lock these two units together by first mountain folding this flap behind along an existing crease. So we're simply going to tuck this top layer of paper behind, just like this. Then you'll notice this small triangle, which we want to tuck inside of the same pocket by simply valley folding along an existing crease. So just tuck that inside of the pocket as well. And then we can just fold down this top triangle along an existing crease. So just flatten everything out. And once you've done that, then we're going to turn the model over, and we're going to slightly rotate it once again. And now you've connected the second and third units. And now we need to connect the first and last units together the same way. And I find it easiest to do that by carefully separating the two units on the top of the model, just like this. Then again, we carefully want to slide the first unit's flap inside of the last unit's pocket, just like we've been doing. Again, make sure you only slide the top layer of paper from the first unit inside of the third unit's pocket. And you'll see that the units will pretty much align themselves. But if not, you want to make sure that both units are aligned at the top of the model here, and make sure they align at the bottom of this vertical edge as well. And once you have that, then we're going to turn the model over one last time, and again focus on this top section here. So again, we want to start by mountain folding this top layer of paper behind along an existing crease, just like that. Then you'll notice this small triangle, which we want to tuck inside the same pocket by simply valley folding along an existing crease. So just tuck that inside like that. And then you can fold down this top triangle along an existing crease as well. And once you have that, then you can turn the model over, and your origami Penrose triangle is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to fold an origami Penrose triangle designed by Alessandro Bebert. Feel free to upload photos of your completed model to the YouTube gallery on my website to be featured here in my next video, or simply upload your photos to Instagram with the hashtag EasyOrigami to be featured here as well. Also, be sure to check out Alessandro's Instagram and Flickr photo stream for more of his impressive work. I actually had a chance to meet him at the 2017 Origami USA convention, and his work is really incredible in person, so definitely check that out. And if you're also interested in origami tessellations, be sure to check out his latest book called Origami New Worlds. I'll post the links for everything in the video description below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. And of course, subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.